All right, hey, welcome HL Mathers. Short tutorial on section 2.2, composite functions. Um, how do you work with these things? So I'm going to do a couple examples. First, the notation. How do you write it? When you, you write it like this, this is one way to write it, f of g of x. It's like a function of a function. That's what it means to, to do a, a composition of, fu of functions. So you have one nested inside of another one. Another way you'll see the writing is you'll see it like f and then a little open dot, g, like that. And then you may have an x outside of that. So that's, these are just two different ways of writing. It's the same thing, though. When you see it in this notation, what you have to remember is the second, whenever it appears second, is the one that's inside. So that same way, if I wrote it like this, and you're going to have problems like that, that's going to mean g of f of x. So you just flip the order around. So let's just do a couple of samples so you start to get the hang of this. The thing I've learned from me from doing the functions, I try not to think too deeply about it. I start to confuse myself sometimes when I do that. So I try to just kind of keep a little bit um, on the surface, if you want to think of it that way. So let's do a problem. In the beginning, um, the first few problems from this problem set are about evaluating it at a particular point. So you want to have one particular, uh, what do we call that, uh, independent and input. So it's an independent variable, and you're going to figure out what comes out of this composed function. So you have to go in order, basically. You do the one that's inside first. So this problem, this is problem 2b. We had two functions, and this is another way of writing functions. x with that little line and then arrow. That's the same thing as just saying f of x equals 2x minus 3. Sorry about that. But that's just another way of writing it. So you want to do this one first. You want to know what is this equal when x is 0. So you plug in 2 times 0 minus 3. That's going to be 0 minus 3. That's negative 3. So that's what f of x is equal to when x is 0. Now you need to do the second part, is now you need to find what's g. So now we can say it's really g of negative 3, because f of 0 is negative 3. So what's g of negative 3? So now I go to the g function, plug it into the x. I'm going to come down here and do that. So it's going to be 2 minus negative 3 squared. What's negative 3 squared? That's 9. 2 minus 9, that's negative 7. So that's your answer. Your final answer is negative 7. So it's a couple steps. First, take the number, plug it into the first function, the f, figure that out. Take that and stick that into your g. All right? Hopefully that wasn't too sloppy. You followed that. What you want to remember is that these x's are not the same x's. We're just writing x, but one could be written as an x, one could be a z. It doesn't matter. What you're thinking is, once you calculate the first value of the first function, then that second x is like a container, and you're going to put it inside that container, whatever that is. It just happens to be x. So don't confuse those two x's. So that's what I mean by like not thinking too deeply about it, because the more you look at it, you may start to confuse yourself. So just try to work some of those problems in the beginning. Hopefully you'll get the hang of them pretty quick. I'm out.